Hi everybody, Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D studio. This is part two of Alex Corville's starter tutorial. This part will cover the tool pathing portion of Carbide Create. If you missed the design part, that was part one. Go ahead and watch that first. If you've already watched it, you're set to go. Here's Alex once again. Hello everyone, this video is part two of the Animal Keychain CNC project. It's time to take the design you have created in part one and apply tool paths. These tool paths will tell your machine what tools you have put in the spindle and how to cut your stock in order to create your item. You will select the tools to be used and tell the machine how to follow the elements of your design. To watch part one of this project, click the link in the description. Start by launching Carbide Create and opening the previously saved project that we called Keychain. Having created our item under the Design tab, we will now move to the Toolpaths tab. Here, we can assign different types of toolpaths to vector paths created in Part 1. Let's first do a quick overview of the toolpaths available in the free version of Carbide Create. The simplest toolpath is Contour. This toolpath will cut along a chosen vector path with options to cut inside the path, outside the path, or directly on the path with no offset. Each of these options has different uses. We'll be using two of the options in just a few moments. The contour of toolpath is generally used as the final toolpath for cutting or separating the machine part from our stock. The second toolpath is the pocket. The pocket toolpath allows you to cut a pocket into your stock inside of a closed vector path. A closed vector path is any shape you have created that has a defined interior. This could be a standard circle, a square, or perhaps an outline of a cat. This pocket toolpath will cut as deep as you want and is controlled by you in the toolpath options. With every toolpath, you'll have to take into consideration the type of tool being used and the material being cut when determining how to instruct the machine. The third toolpath is called a texture toolpath. This toolpath is used to create an artistic effect of a texture and again is controlled by you in the settings of the toolpath dialog. Texture really has to be seen to be understood. To learn how to use the texture toolpath, be sure to change the settings and apply a liberal use of the show simulation button to see how your changes in the toolpath are reflected in the final simulation. The last toolpath we will cover today is VCarve. The VCarve toolpath is best used for text and small details. Be sure to use a V-end mill when using the V-Carve toolpath to get the correct results that you intended. Now that we understand the very basics of the toolpath that we are going to use, it is time to define the tools required for this project. This project uses two tools, a 16th inch flat end mill or tool 112 from Carbide 3D and a 60 or 90 degree V-bit. The V-bit is used only for the text and tool number 112 the 16th inch end mill will be used for all other toolpaths. Let's start by creating the texture toolpath. Select the main animal shape and animal outline using shift and click. Once those vector paths are highlighted in orange, select the texture toolpath. Upon creating a new toolpath, the first step is to choose the correct tool. Select the edit tool button, and in my case, I'm using a Nomad machine and my stock is hardwood. I'm going to use tool 112 and click select. For the purposes of this project, we are gonna stay with the standard settings for the 16th inch end mill. In other projects, you can and may want to alter the specific settings for your end mill. Carbide Create does a terrific job of giving you stock settings for a variety of materials when you're getting started. Now I'm going to set the max depth as one millimeter and click okay. We can see the 2D representation of the texture toolpath we have just created. Select the Show Simulation button and see that there is now a nice texture on the border of my keychain that may even look a little bit like fur. The next toolpath we will create is the Pocket Toolpath. This will remove the material in the center of our keychain in preparation for the pet's name and the keychain hole. Select the main outline here and click the Pocket Toolpath button. Next, make sure tool 112 is selected and change the max depth for this toolpath to two millimeters. Select OK and now select Show Simulation to see the 3D representation of the pocket toolpath you have just created. The next step is important. We are going to name our toolpaths. 
Well, this project is simple. It is always a good idea to name your toolpaths so that when creating a complex item with a wider variety of toolpaths, you can easily reference what particular part of the operation you'd like to edit. To rename toolpaths, double click on the toolpath you would like to rename and edit the toolpath name field and select OK. Here I'm going to leave the texture as is and change the first pocket toolpath to the main animal shape. Next, select the animal name and select the V-carve toolpath. This toolpath is ideal for small details and text. Make sure to pick a V-carve tool from the library. In this case, tool number 301, the 90 degree V-bit from Carbide 3D is a great choice. Change the start depth to 2 millimeters and the max depth to 3 millimeters. This will make sure that we can start the V-carve at the bottom of the pocket. The tool will now start on the interior face of the keychain and cut the letters one millimeter deep into our stock. Change the name of the toolpath to your pet's name and select OK. The next toolpath we'll create is the keychain hole. To do this, select the keychain hole vector path and once again, click the contour toolpath. You'll once again select the 112 16th inch end mill. For this toolpath, we will also need to start on the face of the pocket. To do this, change the start depth to 2 millimeters and the max depth to 6.4 millimeters or use stock bottom. This will create a toolpath that will cut completely through the stock. Make sure that the offset direction is set to inside left as this will preserve the size of the hole you have made with the vector path. And finally, name the toolpath keychain hole and select OK. By clicking the Show Simulation button, you can see the progress you've made. Select the Hide Simulation button and return to create the last toolpath. This final toolpath will cut out the keychain from the stock. To do this, select the outline around the animal shape and select the contour toolpath. Make sure that the tool number 112 is selected and the start depth is set to zero and the max depth is set to 6.4 millimeters. Finally, check that the offset direction is set to outside right to preserve the shape of your keychain outline. I'm going to name this toolpath keychain cutout and select OK. Hit that show simulation button and look at our awesome work. We have a keychain with a cool fur texture, the animal's name, a keychain hole, and finally the perimeter is cut out to a nice 1.5 millimeter outline of the animal. Be sure to save your project, and now make sure that you have the correct post processor selected under the edit menu before you save your G-code. This will output the file type and information needed for your machine to follow the instructions of the toolpaths you've just created. Thanks for watching part two of this tutorial, and happy machining.